Moshe is to take Aaron and his sons from among the children of Israel that they may minister to Elohim as priest. Aaron and his sons are adorned in holy garments for glory and beauty. Gifted artisans are filled with the spirit of wisdom to make Aaron's garments that consist of a breastplate with 12 different precious stones along with the Urim and Tumim in it. An ephod with two onyx stones bearing the names of the children of Israel, a robe, a woven tunic, and a turban having a gold plate with the engraving holiness to Jehovah on it. A sash, and also a sash. Aaron's son's garments consist of a tunic, a sash, and headgear. Moshe is to consecrate them for ministering to God as priest. He washes them at the door of the tabernacle with water, then dresses them in their holy garments. And Aaron's head is anointed. A young bull and two rams without blemish are required to hollow them for ministry, ministry of priesthood. Moshe puts some of the blood of the bull on the horns of the altar with his finger. And with the ram's blood, he puts it on the right ear, the right hand's thumb, and the right foot's big toe of Aaron and his sons. This blood, along with the anointing oil, is sprinkled on them and their garments. The parsha ends with the direction on how to make the altar of incense and how Aaron is to attend to it daily. But God commands no strange incense is to be offered on it or any other type of offerings are to be offered on it. The Haftorah portion this week is in Ezekiel 43.10-27. through 27. Son of man, God says to Ezekiel, describe the temple to the house of Israel that they may be ashamed of their iniquities. And if they are ashamed of all they have done, make, it, make known to them the design of the temple along with its arrangements and all its ordinance. Ezekiel then begins to write down in the sight of Israel the Torah of the temple. He is given the same ordinance and instructions given to Moshe in the Torah portion this week. We see the sprinkling of the blood on the altar and the blood being applied to the horns of the altar. Also the Levites, the seed of Zadok, are consecrated as priests to minister once again to Jehovah. For seven days, atonement is, is made for the altar and purification of it along with consecrating it. On the eighth day, the priest shall offer burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar, and I will accept you, says Adonai Yehovah. The, the Brit Chadashah portion is in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, says Rav Shaul. He teaches us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers, rulers of darkness, and spiritual wickedness in the heavenly. Therefore, take up the whole armor that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Our spiritual armor is this, girding our waist with truth, putting on the breast, breastplate of righteousness, having shot our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, taking up the, field, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And just like Aaron and his sons were to be adorned in their holy garments for their ministry to Elohim, we too are to put on our spiritual garments, which is the whole armor of God, so that we also can minister to him. In doing just that, Rav Shaul tells us to pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen. Amen. Shofarim.
you for what we just heard, Lord. We praise you today. We glorify you, Father. And Lord, this morning we suit up, Father, with the armor of God. We want to wear those pieces, Father, that clothing that you've given us every single day. We ask, Lord God, that you forgive us of all our sin. Cleanse us, Father. Lord, we want to come into your presence this morning. We want you to we want to apply that blood, Father, that you shed on the cross to our ears, Father, to our hands and to our feet. We just praise you this morning, Lord God. We want to hear what you have for us today. You're a holy God, and we want to be holy in your presence. We want to walk out what you've given us to walk out, Lord God, and and to use our hands, Father, to do the work of your kingdom. Lord, you're teaching us so much, Father, so much in this period of time, Lord God, that is so, so full of turmoil in the world, Lord. You're teaching us the things that are very important and the things that are not important, Lord. We just praise you, Father. We give you glory and honor. Lord, I pray for an anointing upon this service. I pray, Father, that you would touch the word, Father, as it comes forth, Lord, and that nothing would fall to the ground, that we would eat from your table and we would be nourished, Lord. I pray, Father, for a touch for those, Lord, that are here, Lord, that are visitors, Lord. You would just touch them in the name of Yeshua. Lord, I pray for an anointing upon the worship, Lord, because, Father, we're here, Lord God, to worship you, and we want to give you glory and honor and praise. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We love you, Yeshua. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do in this service. Touch each one. Heal those, Father, that could not be with us, those that need a touch of healing from you. Lord, that we just lift them up to you. And we praise you, Father, that you've already heard our prayers, Lord. And you're already on it, Father. You're already working. And Lord, we trust you. And we listen to that scripture, Father, that says, Be still and know that I am God. We do know that you are God. You are Adonai. And we give you praise in Yeshua's name. Amen. Well, then, may let us stand together. For how lovely are the tents of Jacob and the dwelling places of Israel. Matovu Halecha Yaakov Shaft in my best song, me money, I yes, you were. Shaft in my best song, me money, I yes, you were. My, 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 oh, my best song, my, 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 oh, my best song. Hey, hey. Oh my 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 best song my oh my 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 best song shaft in my best song me money I yes you were shaft in my best song me money I yes you were my 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 oh my best song my 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 oh my best song hey hey 
Therefore, with joy, we shall draw water from the wells of salvation. Amen, amen. You may be seated. All right, Shabbat Shalom. All right, we begin the service with Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu Adonai Hamvarach. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Leolam Vayed. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, for all eternity. The children of Israel shall keep the Shabbat, observing it throughout their generations as an everlasting covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever, for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Shabbat to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Blessing Mashiach Yeshua together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher natan lanu et derech ha-Yeshua b'Mashiach Yeshua. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation, Messiah Yeshua. Amen. Now I'll stand for the Shema. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Vehafta et Adonai Luhecha, Bukola Vavku, Konashakov, Komadakam. Vahayu Hadvrim Ha Ele, Asher Anukim Hatsav Kahayom, Allah Vaveka. Vashina Talevenak with the Bartabam, Peshevtaka Bevetaka, Uvlat Gava Derek, Ushapka Uhumeka, Ukshartam Liota Yadaka. Vahayule tutvo bene neka, uktatam mezuzope techa, iwi shurecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them upon the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Vahatha, Dariacha, Kamoka. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, and God of our fathers, God of Avraham, God of Yitzchak, and God of Yaakov, the great, mighty, and awesome God, the most high God who bestows grace and creates all, and remembers the kindnesses of the fathers and brings a redeemer to his children's children for his name's sake with love. O King, helper, savior, and shield, blessed are you, O Lord, shield of Avraham. You are eternally mighty, my Lord, the resurrector of the dead are you, abundantly able to save, who sustains the living with kindness, resurrects the dead with abundant mercy, supports the fallen, heals the sick, releases the confined, and maintains his faith to those asleep in the dust. 
Who is like you, O master of mighty deeds, and who is comparable to you, O king, who causes death and restores life and makes salvation sprouts? Our God and God of our fathers, may be pleased with our rest, sanctify us in your commandments, and grant us our portion in your Torah. Satisfy us from your goodness and make us rejoice in your salvation and purify our hearts to serve you in truth, in love and favor. O Lord our God, grant us your holy Shabbat as a heritage and may Israel, who sanctifies your name, rest therein. Baruch atah Adonai, mekadesh Shabbat. Blessed are you, O Lord, who makes the Shabbat holy. Magnified and sanctified be his great name in the world to which he has created according to his will. May he establish his kingdom during your life and during your days and during the life of the whole house of Israel, even swiftly and soon, and all say, Amen. Amen. Let his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted, extolled, and honored, magnified and lauded be the name of the Holy One. Blessed is he, though he be high above all blessings and songs, praises and consolations which are uttered in the world, and all say, Amen. Amen. May you make peace in his high places, make peace upon us, upon all Israel, and say, Amen. Amen. Yitgadolivatgadashimerabam,Ramadivirkurtivinomikmakote,Bekaikonovyomokonovkaidokol,Betisrael,Bagalavizman,Kurivimru. Amen. Oh, Shalom bim ramah Huya se shalom aleinu Ve'acho Yisrael Vimru Himru Amen Ya se shalom Ya se shalom Shalom Aleinu Yaakov Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Yaakov Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'acho Yisrael Yase Shalom Yase Shalom Shalom Aleinu Ve'acho Yisrael May he who makes peace in high places make peace for Israel and for all mankind and say Amen. Shabbat, we delight, 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 we del
The prophets were told in the Shia Glory to the light Glory to Just as you rest there when your work was done, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We enter the rest by the work of your Son. Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. Dress and the spirit you feed, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. You and we provide every need, Lord, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight, we delight in your Shabbat. We delight, we delight in your Shabbat. Your people.
to your feet, Lord. May your word and spirit fill this place. May your presence come and fill this place, Lord. You are so holy, and you are so. today, Lord God, we honor you on this Shabbat, this island in time that we gather together to bring you praise and glory, Lord, to put all the fears and worries and cares of the world aside and stand before you. Today we enter your chamber. We ask you, Lord God, to dance with us today, Father, to open our eyes to see and our ears to hear all that you have for us. Be in each and every one of us now, Lord God. May your presence be f filled by, felt by everyone, Lord God, that's here and filled into every heart and mind. May your word come forth with boldness and strength. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Vayahi ben Suah Aaron. When the ark would travel, Moshe would say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Let them that hate you flee from you. For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah and the word of the Lord from Yerushalayim. Blessed be he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Yisrael. Ya'amod yo'el ben Avraham la Torah. Baruch et Adonai hamvarach. Baruch Adonai hamvarach le'olam va'ed. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, אשר בחר בנו מכל העמים, ונתן לנו את תורתו, ברוך אתה אדוני, נותן התורה. Bless the Lord, the blessed one. Blessed is the Lord, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all people and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. ילדים. Those that are watching this on YouTube or getting this in the podcast, um, this is a time in which we invite Hayel Adim up front. We pray a weekly blessing over each and every one of them. But first we ask them, or we say... <laughs> we say, Boker Tov. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh Lord, for these blessed children and the families that they represent. May they be blessed abundantly as Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, Ephraim, and Manasseh. Lord, I ask that you keep a hedge of protection around each and every one of them. That you keep them away from the sickness that's, that's around about us. That you keep them out of harm's way, O oh Lord. Lord, as they grow physically, Lord, and they begin to understand spiritually who you are, Yeshua, we ask, Lord, that they be drawn near to you, that they receive you as their Mashiach, and, Lord, that they would be used by you for your service, especially in these end days and these troubling times. They're such a blessing to us, O oh Lord, and we just thank you for them in Yeshua's name. Amen. The 
Yata Tetzave, et Bene Yisrael, Vaihu, Vaihu Elecha, Shemen Zait Zach, Hatit Lemor, La Lotner Tamid, Beohel, Moed Michuts, La Paroketa, Sher Al, Ha Edut, Yarokotom, Ahron, Uvanav, Meerev, Ad Boker, Lifne Adonai, Huhat, Olam, Lidorotam, Meet Bene Israel, Yata. Hakerev Elecha et Ahron Achicha Vet Banav Oto Metok Bene Israel Lekano Li Ahron Nadav Vavihu Elazar Vitamar Bene Ahron Thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring the pure oil, I'm sorry, oil, olive oil, rather beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always in the tabernacle of the congregation without the veil, which is before the testimony. Aaron and his son shall order it from evening to morning before the Lord. It shall be a statute forever and to their generations on the behalf of the children of Israel. And, I, and take thou unto Aharon thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel that he may minister unto me in the priest's office even Aharon, Nahab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aharon's sons. Amen. 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 ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת וחי עולם אתה בתוכנו ברוך אתה אדוני נותן התורה. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. וזאת התורה אשר שם משה לפני בני ישראל על פי ארניה Al Piadunai Biad Moshe, and this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel at the command of the Lord through Moses' hand. John 1 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. This Torah scroll is the Word of God, Yeshua is this Lamb. John the Immerser said in John 1 29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. God's Word is written on lambskin, Yeshua is this Lamb. In John 12 32, Yeshua said, And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. The two wooden poles holding this Torah scroll are called Eitz Chaim, or Tree of Life. Yeshua was sacrificed on two wooden poles some 2,000 years ago for our sins. Amen. Eitz Chaim hi l'machazakim ba'avet humchei ha'mushar. Darchei darchei no'am v'kol netafetecha shalom. Heshevenu danai alecha v'neshuva kadesh yemenu kakadem. It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it. Happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Cause us to return to you, Adonai, and we shall return. Renew our days as of old. Revelation 2.7 reads, You as an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the congregation. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Yeshua was, is, and shall ever be this word of the one living God that we look upon this day for our salvation. Amen. You may be seated. ready to study the word this morning. How many know we're but how many know that we're exactly four weeks away from Pesach? So <clears throat> you know in these four weeks we begin our preparation time. You're going to hear teachings and messages over the next four weeks starting today 
about preparation. Preparation, the preparation for Pesach. Now, the title of this message is, You Shall Charge, or You Shall Command, and it's appropriate to have that for the next four weeks because um, I'm going to draw your attention as to the things that, as believers, you should be following. Um, I have a little ringing up here. Jason, can you cut it back a little bit? I have a little ringing kick, uh, feedback here. So in the preparation time, we need to begin to um, reflect internally for what we're going to come together and share um, in the physical uh, as we have our corporate Pesach. This week's parasha, Tzva Ve, sorry, we heard the command or order or charge to bring pure olive oil to light the lamp that was brought before the Lord. Today's message deals with lighting the pure oil that is within us as believers in Yeshua with the light, the right fire, and with offering up the right incense. Let's begin by looking at Shemot chapter 30 verses, chapter, verses 1 and verses 6 through 9 which says the following. Now you shall make an altar as a place for burning incense. <clears throat> you shall make it of acacia wood. You shall put this altar in front of the veil that is near the Ark of the Testimony, in front of the atoning cover that is over the Ark of the Testimony, where I will meet with you. Aaron shall burn fragrant incense on it. He shall burn it every morning when he trims the lamps. And when Aaron sets up the lamps at twilight, he shall burn incense. There shall be perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. You shall not offer any strange incense on this altar or burnt offering or meal offering. And you shall not pour out a drink offering on it. Now this, this uh, parasha Titzaveh begins uh, with the tabernacle providing the appropriate setting for God to rest his presence upon Israel. But the, his proximity, God's proximity, created danger for all those around about. Shemot 19, 9 through 13 in chapter 20 verses 8 through 21 says the following. Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will come to you in a thick cloud, so that the people may hear when I speak with you, and may also trust in you forever. Then Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. The Lord also said to Moses, Go to the people, and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and have them wash their garments, and have them ready for the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. But you shall set boundaries for the people all around, saying, Beware that you do not go up on the mountain or touch the border of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall certainly be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall certainly be stoned or shot through. Whether animal or person, the violator shall not live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they shall come to the mountain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male slave or your female slave or your cattle or your resident who stays with you. For in six, day, six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and everything that is in them. And he rested on the seventh day. For that reason, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be prolonged on the land which the Lord your God gives you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male slave or his female slave or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And all the people were watching and hearing the thunder, and the lightning flashes, and the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking. 
And when the people saw it all, they trembled and stood at a distance. Then they said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us or we will die. However, Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, and in order that the fear of him may remain with you, so that you will not sin. So the people stood at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. These Ten Commandments are justice. They are law and order. They are direction for us as believers. Those who didn't hollow his presence were subject to the attributes of justice. God wouldn't tolerate any action of not following his orders. So let's look at a few examples of not following God's orders in our Tanakh. Turn with me to 1 Samuel chapter 4 verses 1 through 7 which says this. So the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to meet the Philistines in battle and they camped beside Ebenezer while the Philistines camped in Ephek. Then the Philistines drew up in battle formation to meet Yisrael. When the battle spread, Yisrael was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men on the battlefield. When the people came into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let's take the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord from Shiloh, so that he may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent men to Shiloh, and from there they carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Armies, who was enthroned above the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni, and Phinehas were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. And as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord was coming into the camp, all Yisrael shouted with a great shout, so that the earth resounded. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What does the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the ark of the Lord had come into the camp. So the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Here in 1 Samuel, it talks about the ark being in the hands of the Philistines. But things didn't go well for them. They were afraid when it showed up, as we just read. They were afraid when they had it in their possession. 1 Samuel 5, 1 through 5 and verse 9 says this. Now the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and placed it beside Dagon. When the Ashdodites got up early the next day, behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and set him back in his place. But when they got up early the next morning, behold, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground bef before the ark of the Lord. And the head of Dagon and both palms of his hands were cut off on the threshold. Only the torso of Dagon was left. For that reason, neither the priest of Dagon nor any who enters Dagon's house stepped on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. After they had taken it away, the hand of the Lord was against the city, creating a very great panic, and he struck the people of the city, from the young to the old, so that tumors broke out on them. And, and I would encourage you to read this, this example of, of what happened to these, this nation these Gentiles as a result of them having taken that ark and, and not knowing the order in which they were to follow the instructions God had gave to Bene Israel. They were also afraid when it was sent back to the Israelites. We see in 1 Samuel 6, 1 through 3, the following. Now the ark of the Lord had been in the territory of the Philistines for seven months. And the Philistines called for the priests and the diviners, saying, What are we to do with the ark of the Lord? Tell us how we may send it to its place. And they said, If you are going to send the ark of the God of Israel away, do not send it empty, but you shall certainly return to him a guilt offering. Then you will be healed, and it will be revealed to you why his hand does not leave you. You know, we see as you read that, that... These, these priests of these pagan, this pagan deity, these priests that instructed them, the people were inflicted with tumors. 
And these tumors also, those that looked in or peered even into the ark, received these tumors. And there were uh, mice that were involved in this whole process. And, and that guilt offering that these priests offered, it was to put uh, five images of the tumor along with images of the mice um, into the box that was sent back out. And then they tested saying that if this ark moved on its own back to B'nai Israel, that uh, obviously it was God. However, if it doesn't, it would be ordered up to chance. And we know the story, what happened with it, right? It went right back to the children of Israel. God's presence was very dangerous for the Gentiles because God had not given them orders to possess the ark. But God's presence related to the ark was, so dang was also dangerous for the children of Israel. 1 Chronicles 13, 3 through 4, 7, 9, and 12 says the following. And let us bring back the ark of our God to us, since we did not seek it in the days of Saul. What then all the assembly said that they would do so, for this was right in the eyes of all the people. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart from the house of Avinadav, and Uzzah and Ahio drove the cart. When they came to the threshing floor of Chidon, Uzzah put out his hand to hold the ark because the oxen nearly overturned it. But the anger of the Lord burned against Uzzah. So he struck him because he had put out his hand toward the ark and he died before God. Then David became angry because the Lord's outburst against Uzzah and he called the place Perez Uzzah as it is to this day. David was afraid of God that day saying, how can I bring the ark of God home to me? They were all excited about this, but they are also confused as to what happened. So as you study scripture and you read these, this example, there's many teachings in here as there have been in, even in 1 Samuel, which you know we have six pages of, of verses to cover this morning. Of course, there's no place for you to go, so it's Shabbat. So we're going to enjoy God's word. And we're going to look at these verses, but when we look at this, there's, you have to look at the examples in Chronicles and find out the context of what was going on around about it. So why did this happen in such a happy time? That's what should stir you up to go look for other verses to explain this. Especially such a happy time and an exciting time. They had willing hearts, but they were not following God's orders. Bummy Bar, Numbers 4.15 says this. When Aaron and his sons have finished covering the holy objects and all the furnishings of the sanctuary, when the camp is, set, is to set out, after the sons of Kohath shall come to carry them by the poles, so that they will not touch the holy objects and die. These are the things in the tent of meeting that the sons of Kohath are to carry. So do you think Uzzah was a son of Kohath? What do you think? Get three guesses. He touched it. He died. What did the scripture say? You don't even get three guesses. God had his order. Uzzah wasn't. Uzzah was not authorized to touch the ark. 1 Chronicles 15, 1 through 4 and 11 through 13 says this. Now David put, built houses for himself in the city of David and he prepared a place for the ark of God and pitched a tent for it. Then David said, no one is to carry the ark of God except the Levites. For the Lord chose them to carry the ark of the Lord and to serve him forever. Where do you think he got that at? Where do you think Magan David got that? By Torah. Go ahead. And David assembled all Israel at Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord to its place which he had prepared for it. David gathered together the sons of Aaron and the Levites. Then David called for the priests Zadok and Aviathar, and for the Levites for Uriel, Aziah, Yoel, Shemaiah, Eliel, and Aminadav. 
And he said to them, You are the heads of the fathers' households of the Levites. Consecrate yourselves, you and your relatives, so that you may bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel to the place that I prepared for it. Because you did not carry it at the first, the Lord our God made an outburst against us, since we did not seek him according to the ordinance. So what happened? King David didn't follow the orders. Uzzah didn't follow the orders because he was not authorized. But this next time they got it right. They knew, there's four things to look at. First, they knew their hearts were right. They were the right authorized people. Third, they were doing the service by sanctifying themselves. And fourth, they were following orders. God knows that it is dangerous for man and woman to be near him without sanctification or set apartness. Davarim, Deuteronomy 5.5 5 and 23 through 29 says this. While I was standing between the Lord and you at that time to declare to you the word of the Lord, for you were afraid because of the fire and you did not go up on the mountain, he said... And when you heard the voice from the midst of the darkness, while the mountain was burning with fire, you approached me, all the heads of your tribes and your elders. You said, Behold, the Lord our God has shown us his glory and his greatness, and we have heard his voice from the midst of the fire. We have seen today that God speaks with mankind, yet he lives. Now then, why should we die? For this great fire will consume us. If we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer, then we will die. For who is there of humanity who has heard the voice of the living God speaking from the midst of the fire as we have and lived? Go near and listen to everything that the Lord our God says. Then speak to us everything that the Lord our God speaks to you, and we will listen and do it. Now the Lord heard the sound of your words when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard the sound of the words of this people which they have spoken to you. They have done well in all that they have spoken. If only they had such a heart in them to fear me and keep all my commandments always so that it would go well with them and with their sons forever. God knows that even though a heart is right, to be in his presence, it also takes reverence. Reverence, fear, reverence. And a willingness to follow God's orders, God's commands. This is part of the preparation for Pesach. You have to understand what we're talking about. Allow it to get into your mind and then into your spirit to understand what we're saying this morning. The final example for this morning of not following orders was Nadab and Abihu. Two of Aaron's sons. Shemot 28 verse 1 says this. Then bring forward to yourself your brother Aaron and his sons with him from among, among the sons of Israel to serve as priests to me. Aaron, Nadav, and Avihu, Eleazar, and Itamar, Aaron's sons. Those men lost their lives by not following orders for the positions that they held as priests. Vayikra Leviticus 10, 1 through 3 says this. Now Nadav and Avihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans, and after putting fire in them, placed incense on the fire and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, It is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me, I will be treated as holy, and before all the people I will be honored. Now how many have read this verse before, these verses before? How many continue on reading to see exactly what, what was going on with uh, Nadab and Abihu? What were they doing? What were they doing? What were they doing? Anyone remember what they did? Alright, what were they consuming? I'll define it further. What were they drinking? Right. What were they doing? They were drinking and driving. You don't drink while you drive. Follow the instructions. Follow the orders. Vayikra 10, 8 through 11 says this. The Lord then spoke to Aaron saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you do not die. 
It is a permanent statute throughout your generations. And to make a distinction between the holy and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean. And so as to teach the sons of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them through Moses. Focus over these next four weeks to begin to separate in your lives the things that are clean and unclean. Begin to look at the things in your life and reflect upon it as we prepare for Pesach. Strange fire and incense is not what God ordered. Why? Vayikra 16 to 12 through 13 says this. He shall take a fire pan full of coals of fire from upon the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of finely ground sweet incense and bring it inside the veil. He shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord so that the cloud of incense may cover the atoning cover that is on the ark of the testimony. Otherwise he will die. Incense symbolizes prayers and communion with God the Father. Tehillim, Psalm 141, verses 1 and 2 says this. Lord, I call upon you. Hurry to me. Listen to my voice when I call to you. May my prayer be counted as incense before you. The raising of my hands as the evening offering. Into the Brit Kaddishah, the New Testament. Luke chapter 1, verses 8 through, 8 through 11 says this. Now it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering. Now an, an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing to the right of the altar of incense. In Revelation 5, chapter, verse 8, in chapter 8 verses 3 through 4 says this when he had taken the scroll the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each one holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints another angel came and stood at the altar holding a golden censer and much incense was given to him so that he might add it to the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense ascended from the angel's hand with the prayers of the saints before God. So in this time of separation between what is, what is clean and unclean, begin to also in your prayer time, because those are incenses to the Lord, uh, begin to uh, pray and ask the Lord to reveal the things that are in your heart that need to be addressed and need to be dealt with as we begin to approach this Pesach season. As we read these examples, this really reads as tough judgment. This justice is really tough judgment in the Tanakh. These orders were tough, weren't they? Not like some of our brothers and sisters in today's congregations who are believers when in these congregations their ministers improperly teach that in the New Testament we no longer have to follow the law because we are now under the famous word grace right how many have heard that teaching it's been around for a long time well what does our messianic Talmud the Jewish New Testament really say without the inaccurate church commentary or interpretations or teaching by ministers and teachers that have no understanding of the source of the scriptures in which they teach. Give you an example. The word grace, I've taught it before, this word grace spoken only speaks to the things surrounding salvation and not to all the laws or all the instructions. You have to understand the law. You don't throw all the law out. You have to understand the application of all the law. You have to be lawyers of the word. Acts 5, 1 through 11 says this, as an example of the God is the same today, yesterday, and forever. Look at Acts 5, 1 through 11 which says this. But a man named Ananias, with his wife Sapphira, sold a piece of property and kept back some of the proceeds for himself. With his wife's full knowledge and bringing a portion of it, he laid it, the, at, laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, 
Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the proceeds of the land? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not under your control? Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. And as he heard these words, Ananias collapsed and died. And great fear came over all who heard about it. The young men got up and covered him up. And after carrying him out, they buried him. Now an interval of about three hours elapsed, and his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter responded to her, Tell me whether you sold the land for this price. And she said, Yes, for that price. Then Peter said to her, Why is it that you have agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she collapsed at his feet and died. And the young men came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard about these things. You know, this is a great example. We don't have time to get into the specifics behind this. And, and some of this that's spoken of, we don't know the intentions of, of Ananias and Sapphira, his, his wife, or maybe even what they said about this, about what they said. Most likely, uh, you know, they agreed to to uh, sell this property and, and bring the funds into the needs of the community at the time. Um, this is a prime example of looking at not allowing your right hand or your left hand to know what your right hand has done. That's been interpreted many different ways, but there's external sources that in that day, that meaning had something totally different. And here's what that meaning had had to say, not knowing, don't let your right hand know what your left hand's doing or your left hand know what your right hand doing. What that really means is this, that in the times in which times are good and you do things during those times of good and you are rewarded or blessed in those times of good and then times become bad. When times become bad, you have a tendency to change your mind about what you committed to in the times of good and you want sometimes even to reverse it. Well in God's instruction, the right hand is strength, the left hand is weakness. So the, the message here, the lesson here is, is that when you are in a time of strength and then you're in a time of weakness, don't rethink what you did in your time of strength, in your time of weakness and don't reverse or try to reverse what you did or commit or vow to in that time. It's a whole different way of looking at the right hand and the left hand, isn't it? Hebrews chapter 10 verses 26 through 31 says this. For if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has ignored the law of Moses is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severe punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So there's no difference between the Old Testament, the Tanakh, and the New Testament, the Berit Chadashah. I look at the Berit Chadashah as our Talmud, put together by God through the, through the anointing of the Ruach HaKodesh upon those that that wrote down the instruction, the interpretation of now what Yeshua did on how we should live our lives and what we should do. It's the same. Law hasn't changed. God dealt with judgment on the people of Israel. Exodus 29, 29 says this. The holy garments of Aaron shall be for his sons after him, so that they may be anointed and ordained in them. Now in the Brit Kadashah, it deals with righteousness. Matthew 5.20 says this. For I say to you that unless your righteousness far surpasses that of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So are we to exceed that? How can we do that? 
How can we exceed that? Even if the scribes and Pharisees who devoted their life to following the commandments and the orders and the instructions, how can we do that? Well, it can't be achieved without the infilling of the Ruach HaKodesh. That possession that exists within our spirits that has been given to us as the earnest, the deposit, which will raise us in the end days. How do we do this? Ephesians 6, 11 through 14 says this, for those that believe. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. Not the unbelievers. This applies to the believers. Continue on. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God, so that you will be able to resist on the evil day, and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having belted your waist with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. By being equipped, you have now been sanctified, have been set apart putting on that armor. Saul wanted David to put on his armor. David refused because he wasn't anointed to wear Saul's armor. He was anointed to wear the armor that God had given him. Just as you are anointed to be wearing the armor of God that God has put together for you. Hebrews 10, 19 through 22 says this. Therefore, brothers and sisters, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. And with a pure heart. Ezekiel 36, 24 through 28 says this. For I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the lands. And I will bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and bring it about that you walk in my statutes and are careful and follow my ordinances. And you will live in the land that I gave to your forefathers. So you will be my people and I will be your God. It takes a new spirit on the inside to follow God's orders and commands. Remember Nicodemus? John 3, 1 through 6 says this. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus responded and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a person be born when he is old? He cannot enter his mother's womb a second time and be born, can he? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless someone is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which has been born of the flesh is flesh, and that which has been born of the spirit is spirit. Born again. My teaching on the Bereshit Genesis garden experience, which includes discussions about the intertestimonial book of First Enoch talking about Adam and Eve how they died and they died and their spirit and their flesh were separated how many remember that teaching that's good you shouldn't because I've not given it yet but you will you will hear that teaching very soon just following orders is not for is not enough. You must be born again. It is then that the orders are not orders any longer. How many know that following God instructions are not a burden or not a yoke? When you love the one that's given you the instruction. 
Because you know that instruction is for your protection. It is for, it is for your well-being. So how do you perfect holiness? How do you perfect righteousness? And no one can be righteous. The word saints really means you're maturing in the faith. You should not be the same way this year as you were last year. You have to be continuing to move forwards, maturing in the faith, perfecting holiness and righteousness. 2 Corinthians 7.1 says this, Therefore, having these promises, beloved, let's cleanse ourselves from all defilement of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Defilement not only happens in the flesh, which is governed by uh, uh, laws associated with the flesh, but it also affects the spirits. And there are laws associated with separating the clean and unclean from the spirit. The book of James talks extensively about that. In the fear, reverence of the Lord by following his orders, his commands. John 14, 15, chapter 15, verses 10 through 11 says this. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. These things I have spoken to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made full. This, for those that may be listening to this podcast, and those may have been, and maybe even there's teachers or ministers, which, which we know listen to some of our teachings, um, they may be uh, improperly teaching the explanation of grace. This goes complete contrary to that teaching. John 14, 15 and 15, 10 through 11. You need to study this verse because you can't do away with God's commandments and love Yeshua and therefore have access to the Father because it doesn't work. You're just like the Philistines. In the New Testament we find people not following God's orders and they try to bring forth strange fire. Acts 9, 10, 12 through 17, uh, 12 through 17 says this. So that handkerchiefs or aprons were even carried from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and the evil spirits went out. But also some of the Jewish exorcists who went from place to place attempted to use the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had the evil spirit, saying, I order you in the name of Jesus from Paul, whom Paul preaches. Now there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, doing this. But the evil spirits responded and said to them, I recognize Jesus, and I know of Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit pounced on them and subdued all of them and overpowered them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. This became known to all who lived in Ephesus, both Jews and Greeks, and fear fell upon all them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was being mag magnified. You just can't take and use words without understanding what's behind the words. You have to have a relationship with Yeshua. The gifts can't be bought. They are there to glorify God. The miracles can't be bought. They're there to glorify God. Just as then you can still be exposed to strange fire. For example, in comparison, look at this first example. Drunk like Aaron's sons. Many teach and have taught that you can be drunk in the spirit and continue on with laughter and silliness. How many have seen those examples for those that attend congregations that have gone that far astray. Or the second example, called to do ministry without being chosen or knowing what they are doing because they don't know God's orders and that there's no need for the law. How many are familiar with examples of that? Let's look at the third example, casting out devils in the name of Jesus, as we just read, without having a relationship with him and knowing him and moving in that power. And then the fourth example, which is a various dangerous example, 
is spiritual power seekers. Spiritual power seekers. Seeking power over others. Not allowing God to be glorified. Taking the glory for themselves. Acts 8, 14 through 19 says this. Now when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent them Peter and John, who came down and prayed for them, that they would receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not, yet, for he had not yet fallen upon any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they began laying their hands on them, and they were receiving the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give this authority to me as well, so that everyone whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. This example is a prime example of there's a difference between the flesh and the spirit. There's a difference between them. The laws and orders associated with governing the flesh is different from the laws and instructions given by the Ruach HaKodesh for our spirits that are on the inside. And we see that here with this example of those who had not received the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, had, they had not experienced the infilling, but were operating just on the commandments. And how dangerous that became. If you read on, you'll see how this individual was uh, corrected for what he said. But you can avoid such exposures to these examples. Psalm 119 verses 1 to 2 says this. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who comply with his testimonies and seek him with all their heart. Psalm 128 verse 1 says this. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. Psalm 119, 10 through 16 says this. With all my heart I have sought you. Do not let me wander from your com commandments. I have treasured your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have told of all the ordinances of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and regard your ways. I shall delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Meditate on his statutes. In this preparation time, meditate on God's instructions. Meditate upon his word. Allow, it to, allow the Ruach HaKodesh to speak to you, to deal with what's clean and unclean within your spirit. And, and also as you read, you will, it will become clear as what's clean and unclean in the physical. John, 1 John 1, 10 through, uh, 7 through 10 says this. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Yeshua his son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous, so that he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his words is not in us. So as you read, and as you study, and as you prepare for Pesach coming up, as you read his word and instruction, and the Ruach HaKodesh quickens you to point something out in your life, spiritually or physically, as you read, you, your own being may trigger things that you need to confess. Immediately, when it comes to mind, immediately acknowledge it, Confess it before the Lord, and the Lord is, is, will forgive you of that sin. Knowing his word, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this. All scripture is inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man or woman of God may be fully capable, equipped for every good work. 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 4 says this. I solemnly exhort you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, correct, rebuke, and exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not tolerate sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and will turn aside to myths. 
During Pesach, we pray and ask for forgiveness of sins before we consume the bread, the matzah, and the wine. We do that and ask for forgiveness. But many may just be reacting to what's going on at the moment. You really need to think through a preparation time before Pesach. You really need to reflect upon yourselves so that when you come to that point of taking this holy remembrance of what Yeshua did for us, you need to really be prepared and ready to take that. You need to avoid such fire by following his orders, his commands. So in closing, let's draw near to him with a pure heart as we approach this Pesach season in full assurance of faith that we are sanctified through the blood of Yeshua. Amen. It is our duty to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the author of creation. For he's made us unlike the nations of the land and has not placed us like the families of the earth. He's not made our portion like theirs and our lot like their multitudes. And we bend the knee and a bow and acknowledge our thanks before the king over kings. The holy one blessed be he. He stretches out heaven and establishes earth's foundation and the seat of his glory is in the heavens above and the presence of his powers in the most exalted heights. He is our God. There is none other. True is our king. There is nothing beside him as it is written in his Torah. And you shall know this day and take to your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heavens above and on the earth below. There is none other. Amen.
Thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for this Shabbat, Lord, that you've brought us all to this place, Lord, where we can feel your presence move among us, Father. We thank you so much for this Mishpacha and all the people here gathered to worship you, Lord. We pray that you'd be with them through this week, Lord, that we would all stand in our faith, Father, and that we'd seek you each day, that we not let our busy lives get in the way of you, Father that we seek you first, that we seek your face only each morning when we wake up, Lord, that you'd reveal your glory to us each day as we move about, that your presence would be with us, Lord, and that we'd find rest and peace in you, Yeshua. And we love you and thank you in Yeshua's name. Amen.
before that, go ahead and we'll do oh, of course. Um, 
So I got a list of things to go through. I'll try to get through them pretty quickly. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, the, the message, as we announce every week, the message uh, is recorded and placed on YouTube, uh, Facebook, as well as our podcast channel. All of them, Rosh Pina, uh, Messianic Congregation. When you're searching for them, it, it's uh, helpful to put Ohio uh, into the search as well because there is a Rosh Pina Congregation uh, out west somewhere. I, I forgot where, but specifically, I think Oklahoma, there's a Rosh Pina Congregation. So when you're ever searching for us on Online, make sure you put Ohio. Um, also, this week is starting both Yeshiva and Youth Group. Uh, both, both groups will be meeting 7.30 to 9 p.m. on Wednesday night this week. Um, youth Group will be going through a variety of activities with Vera. And then for Yeshiva, we're starting a, a new kind of uh, curriculum class, uh, and we're going to touch on uh, many different topics this year, which uh, Rabbi Stevens is going to discuss. So just real quick, um, we're going to in the month of March, so the next four weeks leading up to Passover, we're going to do uh, a study on how to get closer to God. Getting closer to God through, and each week will be a different topic, worship, prayer, fasting, and charity. And so like for this coming week, we're going to do worship, so everyone who comes to Yeshiva, this is a new time, you know, starting off, it's a new time for people to jump in. Um, Partially related to especially the month of March, at least when Rabbi was talking about getting prepared for Passover. Uh, but this was the what's going on in the world, we all need to walk closer to God. So for this week you can come, I want you to come prepared thinking about what is your definition of worship, how do you worship, what you think worship actually is, and we're gonna go through people biblically how is worship defined, how is worship understood, what Yeshua was talking about it, what the apostles were talking about. It. How do we put it into our lives today? We'll be doing that on each of the Awesome. So again, uh, this Wednesday, Youth Group and Yeshiva, 7.30 to 9 o'clock Wednesday night. Uh, additionally, as we've been talking, as Rabbi uh, taught on, we are four weeks away from uh, Pesach. That is occurring here at Rosh Pina. We're going to have the Seder in the sanctuary. Uh, March 27th, which is a Saturday evening, um, we're going to, we'll come with more details around starting times and everything like that, but we wanted to make that announcement because on the back table is a sign-up list. So I would like to encourage you to sign up, um, and as soon as you can, uh, to sign up, because depending on how many people we have, uh, that will be the cost per person because we're going to have the whole meal catered. Um, we are also, you know, we're still going to have announcements as it relates to the items on the Seder plate. We're still going to have people within Rosh Pina make those uh, as we have every year volunteer and make the items on the Seder plate. But um, since we are having the whole uh, Seder catered, uh, we, we need to know the numbers as soon as possible to provide it to the caterer. So if you could sign up as soon as possible, uh, that would be great. And then we'll have, like, like What's that? Okay. As soon as possible meeting today. So, um, also, and we'll have the more detailed uh, items coming forth the next couple weeks about, you know, asking for volunteers to make the Seder uh, items as well as, you know, tear down or set up and tear down. Okay. But again, keep that on your calendars. March 27th, Saturday night, uh, we'll be here uh, this year. Uh, also, I think all we have is just a reminder is the DACA box and backs, ties, offerings, donations. Alongside here to your left is your praise reports and prayer requests. And let's finish with the verse of the week. So we have two verses. One was added uh, after the teaching as it went along with the teaching. Uh, but the first verse is from, what's the address without looking? Luke 1.37. And it says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And then the second one is John 11.35, Jesus wept. And then if you go to the next slide, here's the verse of the week for this upcoming week to study together, to uh, seek to memorize for next Shabbat. And we'll read it all together with the address, Psalm 91.14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Amen. And we're going to end with the bracha since we have now reopened having coffee and uh, finger foods. So let's say the bracha together. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam ha'motzi lekamin ha'loretz ba'ashem Yeshua ha'mashiach Amen. Shavuot Tov.